Hi, welcome back to Girl Game Squall. This is Silvana, and we're picking up right where we left off, and we're going to go kill Wendigos. So, I know I said in the last episode that I want you guys to vote on how long you think we should let those vid the videos go. Um, with how small the channel is and how few subscribers we currently have, what I'm going to do for right now, until I can get some votes from you guys, is I'm going to shoot somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes each episode. And then that way it won't hopefully be too long. And yet we feel like we've actually got a little bit accomplished. So in here, we have to pick up supplies, and we have to find the people, and we have to kill the Wendigos themselves. So the supplies are pretty easy. They're right, you know, they're very out in the open. The, you know, they're glowy. Now I'm noticing I'm not seeing a lot of Wendigos in here. That's kind of odd. That's probably a good indication that someone or or maybe more than someone is running the quests in front of us and killing the guys. So here's the first dude and you'll see the glow gold on your map. So just pick up the item, go around Here's dude two. We send him on his way. We'll pick up the box right next to him. Okay, well we're done with the boxes. <laughs> okay, then let's see. We'll go over here. These caves are easy to get lost in. If you get turned around, don't worry about it. Here we're gonna go. Okay, here's a window. Come here, buddy. We want to kill you. Alright, so there's a window go. There's usually a oh hey, they're starting to respawn. Okay, here's the mountaineer. And that should be the last one. Okay. Now since they are starting to respawn, we will just start picking them up. Come here, kick you. Hit you in the head. Try not to pull too many of them at one time. If you can avoid it. And since I did get pretty deeply into this cave before they started to respawn. Now what respawn means is when you're in an area like this, well, when you're anywhere that has mobs, uh, and a mob is a, uh, a monster or a bad guy, when you kill it, when you kill a guy, it takes a certain amount of time, and it's different depending on the area, what that amount of time is. For them to, for the, I should say for the game, to re-put them back in. Sometimes it's a very short time period. Sometimes it could be a long time. Um, usually in starter type zones like this, the respawn rate is quite quick because there are so many people running the quests. They don't want to make it too hard. When you get to higher levels, a regular creature may spawn once every minute to two minutes. 
a rare or a boss creature may spawn less than that. They could do it every five to ten minutes. It just really kind of depends on what it is and what kind of area you're at. If it's a quest creature, its spawn rate is going to be much faster, no matter what level you are. If it is a quest type creature, its spawn rate will be faster than a non-quest creature. And there are rares and NPC and things like that that you can kill. Here we go, choosing again. Boots, that's worse than what I have on. Leggings, that's better. We'll pick that. Hey, we got an achievement. An achievement, this is what it sounds like. You have achieved something in the game. They don't, you know, they're not really worth anything, but other than, hey, hey, I did it. We're already level 8, so when we did that, we picked up some items. So let's see what we got and if it's any better. Here's a belt. It is a gray, but it is better than what we have on. And we're low enough that the fact that the item's a gray item doesn't really matter. The leggings are definitely better. And this is for the quests. I always like to try and move quests. I've been stuff out of my bag. That's since we're playing and not much else is going on. There is another quest that goes with this. Did I miss the... I did miss the quest giver. This is where knowing what quests go where comes in super handy. And this is what you're learning from me. I knew I had forgot a quest, so keep in mind as you're picking up quests, look on both sides of the street. Look on your mini map. Do you see any exclamation marks? Sometimes you'll see an exclamation mark and you go to it and you look around and look around and look around and can't find it. If it's near a building, go inside the building. Now, there should be two over there. Yep. Eight gears and the totem seared. That's right. Okay. So, you know, everything with this game is so flexible. And I just want you guys to know that it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be stressful. It can be hard and it can be stressful. It, but that is for me, per, and this, this is a personal thing. What I find the hardest and most stressful is that when I dungeon, that's what I find the most stressful, is when it's lower level dungeons, I, I guess partly because I know them so well and you're more likely to find people who are new to the game like you are. So the people there aren't as, okay, I, I, I've been trying not to cuss on this channel, but I do curse on a regular, so I'm going to give you fair warning now if I cuss then I'm sorry. It, it's just how I am. Uh, and some things I can't say without cussing. There are people, especially in higher raids, that are assholes. They have forgotten that 
it's a goddamn game. And I hate that. I really, really hate that. I play this game for fun. And, and yeah, I, 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 I like the end game. I want to see the raids too. But I, I want to go, I want to do those things because it's fun. I want to do those things because my friends are there. Yeah, okay. There's better gear there too, sure. It, you know, there's progression there. There, if you stick with it, there is prestige there. Being the first of this type of group or that type of group to do something. Uh, and for those people that are hardcore raiders, I love you guys. I do. You guys are great. But, you know, remember that it's still a game. You had to learn the things you know. You didn't come into this game knowing all the things that you know. You didn't go, the very first time you went into that raid, you didn't know to stand, to, you know, to, to stay just in this one specific spot or when this happens, go over there. Not necessarily. You may have known in general if you did some, some research of the boss mechanics, but in generalities, and we've talked about this on this channel before, you can know and still not know. So, you know, maybe not the entire raid team, but don't be above taking someone who is a little more green on the mechanics. Especially if they are a guildmate. And teaching them how to run it. For, you know, I think a, even hardcore raid groups would benefit from the idea of having a raid of like a raid trainer where there is a member, a healer, a tank, and a DPS person in their raid groups that uh, when it's raid time, you, you know, have your main raid where this this is your hardcore, everybody's going after pieces, whatever. And then have that same raid, same group on a different day where you're taking one or two or maybe three new people, one of each spec, that are in your guild and hit the eye level where they can finally get into that raid. And teach them how to raid so that if you have more raiders, you have people who can fill in. Maybe you can start a whole second team. So that was my little raid complaint. So here we are. We finished. None of these are really that good. So when I can't use anything, I look then at what the price to sell it is. 71, 58, 57, I'm taking a step then. Okay, so 
here again. We can't use that. And this seems to be equal to the gray handed gloves we have on. So I know we really should not have gray gloves on. So I'll flip them immediately. I picked up the recipe for what is this? So the blacksmith. Okay, now this we're gonna stick to the side. We're gonna take this to the H when we go up to town the next time. We get a little extra gold, or we're gonna try to any day anyway. Oh, I have to shut the bag. Okay, so Steel Girls Depot. Okay, I know where that's at. Alright, so we've been playing for a couple minutes and we were just talking about the AH. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick here and then that'll and that'll be it for this episode of this walk through. You know, for those people, I'm sure you've seen things on YouTube of people yelling and screaming and raids. It does happen. But the best way usually to avoid that is to get into a guild that raids or to get in to where you're friends with some people who are in a guild that raids that don't mind when it's the big man raids maybe bringing in people from the outside. You will find people who are mean in this game. You will find people who are the sweetest, nicest, kindest people ever. And I'm going to tell a little story about that as we go to the AH. When I was leveling, I was in town, kind of like I am now, and it was my very first Horde character. I had never played Horde before, and I had no idea where anything was at, in the, in the, and I was in Undercity, because I had started as an undead. So, well, hey, Blinktron. Okay, so Blinktron is an engineer pet. We're going to stop that for just a second. And the engineer makes it, pops it out, and it gives free presents. So it gave me some presents. And the presents are usually not good, so I can sell them for some extra money. So we'll go right back to the vendor in a minute. So anyways, uh, I asked in trade chat where this item was. Okay, so, okay, pause. We're at the auction house. This is selling for not a lot, right about 35 gold. And I can sell it to or sorry silver but it sells to the vendor for 25 copper so I'm gonna change this to 30 I'm gonna put the auction up for the longest amount of time possible which is 48 hours and I'm gonna let it go I don't suspect that this is gonna sell really to be honest with you but there you go. 
So let's finish this story real quick while we go sell that stuff we got from the bling shop. So I asked, and the person who answered me was kind enough to A, give me the answer, but B, they came to where I was and led me to where what I needed was at. And once they dropped me off there, they gave me every single inscription that my character would ever need. They just gave it to me. I didn't ask them for it. We hadn't been talking about it. They just gave it to me, all of them. I wish I had thought to write that character's name down because I'm telling you, I would be giving them such a shout out right now. But Blood Elf in Under City, thank you. It was one of the most charitable, kind things I have ever had happened to me. And I know we're too low. I can't pull up what in, what I'm talking about, what it does. But when we level up to that point, I will show you what I'm talking about. But f for me also, this was such a gift because these were things that sold in the AH for at least 20 to 30 gold each. And some of them were much more expensive than that. So for every person you find that makes you want to pound your head in the wall and makes you want to give this game up, you're going to find that other person that inspires you to just keep playing and to maybe pass that stuff along. You know, I don't inscription, but when I get higher level, I'm not above taking a couple gold or if I have like a tailor who can make bags, making a couple bags or buying a couple bags and just giving them to a low level character because it's one of the few things I know for sure, no matter what spec they're going to be, they can use. So that's this episode of Girl Games Wow. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and have a nice day.